Hey everybody, David R. Becker here with Becker Art. And today I want to talk to you about a very important fundamental principle in watercolor. And that is the difference between um, painting a tint and a wash. I know it sounds kind of weird and you think it's not that um, important, but it is so important on learning how to take watercolor and apply it to your paper. There's those two ways of putting it down. One is as a tint and one is as a wash. And let me just go right into it and show you what I mean. So when you're doing a tint, a tint in my, and this is basically my ideas of how I teach and I teach a tint and a wash method. The tint method is a lot of water with a little bit amount of pigment. So let me down here is I'm first going to do a tint, a tint of color. And so I'm putting down water and I'm going to do two, two little th seconds here to show you. And so one is taking a light color, you know, just taking a lot of water in there and I just let me see what color would be best let me try some red so if I'm doing a tint of red it's going to turn into a pink because I'm going to be using a lot of water and then with watercolor if I do um, a lot of water with just a little bit of red it's going to turn pink because it's transparent and it will go through and so this is basically a tint of color and and so with a tint of color you're going to get a lot of water and it's going to be very light. It's basically a light color and you're not going to see much granulation happening because you don't have much pigment into that into that wash. So this is not a wash, I mean a tint. And so this is more of a tint of red, you know, and again, your colors, depending on what color you use. So if I'm using a dark color, let's say a Prussian blue, which is a very, very dark color. But if I use a lot of water, a lot of water with the Prussian blue, just get to the and so if I use a lot of water and I put it in there this is now what a Prussian blue looks like as a tint again I'm trying to use a lot of water if I use it too thick you know of course that's that's not a tint of color that's a very a lot of uh, that's more of a wash but let me just show you again so here I'm using a lot of water and it's a tint and I find that most people beginners most beginners what they do is they have pigment I use Holbein because it always stays fresh, but they'll use like a color, an expensive color, like maybe a Daniel Smith, and they let it dry, and then it becomes very hard, the rock, and so when they're picking up the pigment, they're not picking up much pigment. And so they're doing a lot of tinting, not even knowing that they're doing a lot of tinting. So this is now a tint. That's a tint of color, and most beginners who start out and have hard clumped rocks of um, pigment in their palette that's what they get. They get more of a tint and they can't get a big wash going and they can't show granulation because they're just taking a little bit of pigment from the top of that big rock of color they have in their palette. And that's, and it kind of looks dark in some ways sometimes when you get in there. But, um, so that's the tint. So let me just show you the difference between the tint now and let's do a wash of color. So a wash of color, I say, is when you're using a lot of pigment and also water and you, but you're letting it float. And so this is a wash. So I'm going to put my water down here first. And you can always do this also with a color in your brush of a tint. You can start out your wash with a tint. So I can go with a little bit of red and, then, and start out with a tint of color so you know where you're going. So now this is a tint. But now what I'm going to do is now it's wet. It's the same thing that's red. So it turns it pink because it's transparent. But now we're going to take the red and we're going to add a lot of pigment to it. So now we're going to be sitting and we're going to do a wash. And this is a wash and I find that washes have more pigment in them and you can see more granules of pigment in them. So this is where I call it a wash because you're washing it in and you're floating. You're floating your pigment onto the surface. This is something I teach in every one of my workshops. This is the first thing you have to learn how to do. Because if you don't know how to use it, the pigment correctly, how do you get a hard and soft edge and then use enough paint knowing what how much pigment you have in your brush compared to water is very important. And also to make a line, um, you have to use a lot of pigment. Let me just, uh, I'll have you understand in a second. So there we have a lot of um, pigment and look at the difference. I'm using a lot of pigment and the more pigment I use, the more, um, actually the more opaque it's gonna be. Though I am covering up and certain colors have more white in them, but if it's just like color like that, the red, this is scarlet red and Scarlet Lake. And so if I'm using that on a white sheet of paper, it still is very transparent. You'll see it a little lighter. And so when I'm putting it down, this is a lot of pigment and it's gonna granulate. You can actually see that. And this is a tint, there's a wash. Look at how much pigment I have in that, in that 
color. And so that's where you can get a gradation too. Now let's take, um, the, let's do the same thing with the blue. So again, a tint of blue would be, you know, again, a tint. This is more of a wash right now, but I'm starting out with a, with a lot of water. Start with a lot of water because watercolor, the way to use watercolor is you have water and your pigment sets on top of it and it, it kind of floats in that water. And so then let's say you want to make a gradation from dark to light. You can start over here and it'll just bleed itself and get nice and soft. But look at how the granulation is happening now and it's getting to the regular pigment. And this is how you get granulation. You're using a lot of pigment. And this is something you cannot get if you're using those really hard rock that you let dry out of, um, you know, if Holbein doesn't dry out. So you never have to worry about that. And you use every last drop of Holbein paints in your thing because they don't have Oxcall in them. But nice thing is, is that if you're using Holbein, it's really not gonna dry out. But if you're using other brands that have Oxcall in them and they dry out, you have to submit more pigment into your palette so that you can get the amount of pigment in here. Because if it's just a hard clump rock, you can't pick up enough pigment to make it float on top. It's gonna to be more like this. It's gonna be a less pigment. And so really work up to a lot of pigment. And I'm really, I just did a, a workshop this weekend. And I always notice that the most important thing I gotta teach somebody first is using enough pigment. Now there's a dark, that's the actual value of the actual pigment. And so that, and then dra dragging it across, lightens up on this side. And so this side probably is more of a tint because that's the first thing I put in. But you can tell the more pigment I use, the darker it gets. It gets to the color or the value of whatever the pigment actually is. You know, so um, that's with the transparency. This is covering up a little bit more. So if you want to get the actual color that you're using of the pigment, you have to put enough on there that you're covering up the paper. It's still gonna look transparent because you're floating it into the wash, but it is dark than the color of the actual pigment. So again, when it comes to a wash, you're using the actual pigment color and you're trying to get that exact color that, that squeezes out of the tube as. Um, here, a tint, you don't usually get the color unless it's a very light color. So let's, let's do a tint of yellow and a wash of yellow. And that's the only part where possibly, let's, let's take yellow here. Let me wash it off and clean it out here. So if I take a tint of yellow, it's gonna be very light, right? But it's already a light pigment. And so if you want to granulate, you can use a little bit more pigment, but it's light. And that's the original color of the yellow is when I use it thick, but it's a light color, so it doesn't matter if it's light or dark, the tint, it's about how much water in the pigment ratio you use. So here, now if I use more water, it's gonna be a lot lighter, right? Not that much pigment. But if I do a wash of yellow with a lot of pigment, it's not gonna look that much, um, it's not gonna shift that much more. It maybe get brighter because it's not transparent with the white but it's not going to be that much. It's basically going to be more vibrant because it's going to pick up the actual color and it's not going to be diluted by the white of the paper if it's tint. So don't think of the darkness and lightness of the pigment to make it a wash or a tint. It's about how much pigment you use. So you really have to, as a beginner, learn, and even as an advanced artist, you have to learn how much pigment you're going to use to get the, the, the wash or the tint. If you just want a light color of that, and a tint, you use hardly any pigment. If you really want it really potent and get the, the pigment of the color that actually comes out of the tube, you have to use it thick. And you have to use it thick like this. See, this yellow is very, um, as a wash, that's a tint. That's lighter because you're seeing the paper through it because it's transparent and it's more of a tint. So if I want to cover up the white, I have to use enough pigment. So don't be afraid of using this, um, the pigment. Get in there and get nice fresh pigment. If you don't use Holbein and you have dried clumps in your palette, then at least squeeze in brand new fresh paint so that you can get the look and covering up the white paper and get the actual color of that pigment that you're using. So that's the difference between a tint and a wash. A tint is a lot of water, again, is a lot of water with a little bit amount of pigment. A wash is a lot of pigment and you can control it a lot more because you it's thicker and you can control it and one more thing i want to talk about talk to you about is how to then control that pigment and do a wash so 
let's go right over this one blue again here, again here. So this is a tint. And so if I do the second wash over this tint, I'm gonna do a wash over top of the tint, which you can do because it's gonna always be darker. A wash is always usually more thicker with paint. So, but I, let's say I wanna control the pigment. I can't do a tint um, to control it because there's not much pigment to control the water. And so let's say I wanted to make a line here. I just take a lot of pigment, no water, because it's already wet. I'm gonna take the, the dark Prussian blue. And let's say I wanna draw something. Let's say I wanna draw little trees or pine trees and stuff. I can do that by using a lot of pigment. And even in a white wash, it's gonna be a soft edge, but look at how much pigment I have to use to control that edge. Now let's say I wanted to use Prussian blue, but I wanted to get the light color that I get with a, with a tint. And so that's where I tell people why I use white. So if I need to get control of this pigment like I did here and make it thick, which you can't, you can't make a tint thick and so you can't control it in water. But you, what you can do is take that Prussian blue with white and you can make that color. You know, I can make that color of, of light blue, but now it's thick because I'm not using the white of the paper, I'm using the white of the white paint. And now, look at here, I can make the same exact value and I can control it. Let me wet that over here in white. So if I, if I wet this area over here and I wanna control that edge of that color because that's the white of the paint, I can use the same color with white, with Prussian blue, and now I can control the edge. I can make these pine trees um, stop running around but being the same value as the the tint I had done. I hope that makes sense because that's the reason I use white is so that I can control the light colors that I made from a dark color. This is Prussian blue. I can not I can control the edge if I use it really thick and it went with tinted wash. But if I want to take that light color that was made by with a tint, I would then have to use white to control it because I need more pigment. Everything is about pigment and water ratios. Um, if you have a lot of pigment, you can control it in a wet wash. If you have a little bit of pigment, that's like a tint, you can't control the edges. It's too hard to control the edge because it's just gonna bleed into the water. There's more water, right? So a tint is a lot more water, less pigment, where a wash is a lot of pigment and the same amount of water. You know, So you can control it because it's thickness and it's just running so far. Make sense? I hope it does because this is so important for you to do. And actually try this, try it, doing a tint, doing a wash. You don't, don't always have to do paintings when you're practicing. You know, just try things on a scrap sheet of paper, maybe the back of a painting that didn't work out or on the painting that didn't work out. Just go and try to do some tints on it, do some washes on it. Cause you can always do a wash over a tint. Now you can't do the other way around because it's already got the dark pigment in there. So a tint is just a light spattering of of pigment over a lot of water. And you can always go over top of it um, with more pigment. You can always go more pigment. So let's say I wanted to take this back down. I could rub this all out and then go back on and do another wash on that. So that is possible too. So it's, people tend to say that watercolor, you can't redo things and you really can. You just have to make sure that you're always going from a tint to a wash because it's the, by the time the pigment gets on there, it's on there. And unless you rub it off, that's, the, the final stage is, is, is getting the pig, pigment thick. All right. So I hope that explains a little bit about a wash and a tint. And if you have any other questions, please go to my website at Becker Art and sign up for my Becker Art group on Facebook and ask questions. And I'd love to answer them and get you to be a better watercolorist. All right. Till next time. Until next uh, tip. <laughs> and get my newsletter too. Every, every Tuesday I send out a newsletter with little tips like this in it. All right. Everything is on my website at beckerart.net. See you then. Bye-bye.